Today we're going to be doing five future classic hot hatches that you'll be able to make money on in the future, so stay tuned and see what makes the list. So the idea of the video is five hot hatches that I think will become future classics and go up in value. All the cars that I've picked I think are at their rock bottom value. I think they're only going to go up in value. I don't think they're ever going to get any cheaper than they're currently at. I got the idea of this video is just thinking about cars that I've owned that are worth so much money now compared to what I paid for them back in the day. So I am 32 now and when I was like 18 I had a Renault 5 GT Turbo. I never drove it on the road. It came up and I just I, I absolutely love Renault 5 GT turbos. It's about one of the only French cars that I like really, really like. <laughs> and um, yeah, I paid £250 for it back then. And when you look at Renault 5 GT turbos now, they start at like £12,000. Like you could probably pick them up a little bit cheaper, but quite considerably more than £250 that I paid for mine. Uh, obviously mine was, it was a little bit rough, but it ran and probably could have put a few grand into it and restored it. I would have been like 10 grand up <laughs> at the moment. So yeah, I had a Renault 5 GT turbo turbo and then also I had a couple of Honda CRXs that I paid like around about 500 pounds for and CRXs at the moment go for like six grand upwards depending on the model then I had quite a few Novas the first Nova that I had I paid 20 pounds for <laughs> and then I had a couple I, I think I paid about three or four hundred pounds for the others and yeah now you you're looking at like four grand upwards for a decent Nova if I'd have stored all these cars over the years I'd, I'd have made quite a considerable amount of profit there's other cars that have done exactly the same as like as that so for example like the Clio Williams the Peugeot 205 GTI Astra GTEs so yeah this is my five future classic hot hatches I haven't put them in any specific order uh, just because there were so many to pick from but these are probably like my five favorite pick and then at the end I've got a few honorable mentions as well the early 2000s was actually littered with really good hot hatches there's there's a lot to pick from but yeah this is my five specific pick like I say I haven't put them in any order so uh, let's kick it off with number five So number five on my list is the Mark 1 Seat Leon Cooper R. You can pick them up in the UK at the moment for about £3,500. Obviously the prices are a lot more expensive than back in the day when I was buying cars uh, with inflation and everything. It's very difficult to pick anything good up for like cheap these days, but I think that they're at the rock bottom at the moment. I don't think they're ever going to go any lower than they're, they're at. They came with a 1820 valve turbo. They were about 221 horsepower, which is quite a considerable amount of power for a front wheel drive hatch. Yeah, they were just well quit they came with Brembo brakes all around yeah just a really nice looking car I, I think they're actually probably the best looking lay on out of all of them I, I really really like the way that they look and it was one of the first cars to wear the Cooper badge so it's bound to be a classic as it's been followed by so many amazing Coopers after that so yeah that is why number five is the sale lay on Cooper R four on my list is a car that I've personally owned. It is the FN2 Civic Type R. The reason I pick the FN2 over the EP3 is because I think people have cottoned on to the EP3. The EP3 is another great car that I think you could you could potentially make money on, but I think it has started going up in value already. The EP3 is another great option, but the, I think the FN2 at the moment is just at its rock bottom price. You, I've seen them go for as little as £1,800 recently. At the time of making this video, there was quite a few for sale for about £2,000, which is absolutely absolutely ridiculously cheap if you ask me like I think these cars are worth way more than that they're a really nice interior really well built car just obviously the styling was a bit marmite I personally think that the styling will grow on people as as time goes by I think it's a great looking car it was one of the few cars in the early 2000s that really stuck out and just like looked totally different from anything else um yeah they're just a great car they came with a 2 liter 16 valve twin cam VTEC engine in that was 198 horsepower and just a really reliable car I think 
think it might take a while for the, the values to start creeping up just because they're so reliable. Um, but I think it'll get to a point where they're just so cheap that people will start breaking them for the engines and putting them in the engines into other stuff. Um, and I think at that point when this, the numbers start whittling down is that the, the values will just start creeping up because there won't be many left, which is a similar thing that has happened to the EP3 is people just broke them left, right and center. So they, they ended up going up in value just because there wasn't many left of them. Yeah, and when you look for them now, there's just hardly any decent ones left on the road. So yeah, that is why my number four pick is the FN2 Civic Type R. Number three on my list is the Renault Sport Megane. Uh, you can pick these up pretty cheap in the UK at the moment. They're like £3,000. They came with a two litre turbo, 220 horsepower engine in them. While they're not the most reliable car in the world, I think that kind of pays it in its favor. Like its predecessors, the, the Clio Williams and the Renault 5 GT Turbo were also not the most reliable cars in the world. And I think that helped because they're more difficult to keep on the road for 40 years. And um, I think that really pushes the value up with them. And I think any of these performance Renault really hold like that nostalgia for the people that have owned them in the past and I think years down the line a lot of people will want to buy them back and I just think I think they're at their rock bottom at the moment I don't see them going much lower than they are now and I think in a few years as they get more scarce the the values will start creeping up in them and at the time when they were released they were really like the pinnacle of front wheel drive hot hatches they're only bound to go up in value I think any really any performance Renault is bound to gain value in the end just because people have such a they have such a following the performance Renaults and I think the nostalgia really really helped them hold their value over the years so yeah that's why my number three pick is the Renault Sport Megane. So number two on my list is the Mark II Ford Focus ST. Uh, you can pick these up so, so cheap at the moment. Two grand upwards, sometimes even cheaper than that if you're willing to take one that, that needs a little bit of work. They came with a 2.5 litre turbo, five cylinder engine that produced 225 horsepower and they have loads of tuning potential. They're just gonna be the same as any other turbo Ford from over the years, things like RS Turbo Escort, the RS Turbo Fiesta, the Sierra and Escort, Escort Cosworth. All of them have one, one thing in column, common and, and it is the val current value of them is just absolutely ridiculous. I think just when Ford released the Mark II Ford Focus ST, they just sold like hotcakes and the market just got absolutely flooded, which really put a hole in the in the value of the car over, the ta over time because there's just so many of them on the market. But I think as time goes by and people start breaking them and crashing them and they become a bit more scarce the values will start creeping up on them and because they were so popular they'll have so much nostalgia and people will want them in the future so yeah that is why i have picked the mark ii for focus st as my number two so number one on my list is the Mazda 3 MPS. Yeah, I had one of these about a year ago and I really struggled to sell it. I and I had fixed a lot of the common problems on it. I'd done all the bushings on the car, replaced all the suspension arms, I'd done the timing chain on it, which is a common problem with them. Yeah, I did everything that should have made the car really like really sellable. It had a few scrapes here and there, but it overall it was a pretty decent example and uh, I really struggled to sell it. I was struggling to get any more than £1,800 for it. When I bought the car, I, I was figuring that I would get like two and a half, three grand, but there was absolutely no chance I was gonna get that for it. Really rock bottom values at the moment. I, I think you can pick them up still for like £2,000 or more. And they, yeah, they were the fastest front wheel drive hot hatch when they came out. They were came with a 2.3 litre turbo engine with 263 horsepower, loads of tuning potential. While they're not the most reliable thing in the world, they're a great car and I think the reliability, like I said with the other cars, will help with the value a little bit. And Mazda just didn't really sell them in massive numbers compared to a lot of the other cars that I've got on the list. So I think you won't have to wait as long before the values start creeping up as, as some of the other cars. But yeah, just a great option and a real forgotten classic, to be honest. I think they'll just creep up in value over time. So that is why the number one on my list is the Mazda 3 MPS. So yeah, that's my top five pick. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, 
there are so many cars from the early 2000s that I think will go up in value. The, the five that I picked up, I, I picked mainly because I think the values are just at the rock bottom at the moment and I think the most amount of profit is in those five cars. Um, but there are a lot of other cars from the early 2000s that I think still have a lot of room for profit in them. Things like the Astra VXR. I think the Astra VXR still has a lot of profit in it, although it's held its value a lot better than a lot of the other cars on the list. So I think they still might go down down in value before they go up. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of other cars from the early 2000s, uh, stuff like the Clio 182, the Corsa VXR, the Audi S3, the Mark V Golf R32, the I Ibiza Boca Negra, the Corolla T-Sport, the Rally Art Colt, and the Fiesta ST, to name a few. So yeah, like I say, there's loads of cars from the early 2000s that are bound to go up in value. I think the market's prime at the moment. That's my list of five future classic hot hatches. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If there's any other cars that you think I should have added to the list, drop it in the comments down below. It's always good to see, see suggestions down in the comment. If you have any questions, I always answer all the comments. So yeah, if you have anything to ask, just drop it down below and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.